What's up everyone and welcome to a fresh tutorial. I'm your host Nick and today we are going to create a fuse animation based on the render I made on my Instagram. So in this tutorial we're going to break down how I made this RGB fuse and I will show you how I made this in five simple steps. If you like what you're seeing and want to support me, feel free to subscribe and check out my Instagram page for more content in the future. Alrighty, let's dive in. For our first step, we are going to set up a project file by going to our render settings and changing our render engine to Octane and changing the dimension to 1080 by 1080. By default, Octane starts us off with direct lighting. We're going to change it to path tracing to get realistic lighting in our render. I usually set the samples to 800 to 1000 and always change the GI clamp to 1. By holding shift and pressing V, we can go to our viewport, go to the view tab and then change the opacity to our borders. This way we know what we're framing in our scene. For the next step, we're going to start off with a cylinder. Then we're going to change the rotation to Z+. Then we're going to change our display to garage shading to see the lines of our model. So for this setup, I set the radius to 25 centimeters and the height to 150 centimeters. Then I'm going to zoom in again just to see things a little bit better. Then to finish it, we're going to change the height to 14 and the rotation to 36. To make this editable, the shortcut is C and let's rename it to Caps. Now by using the loop selection tool, by pressing U and L, you can easily select around the object. Once you select the base, we will split by right clicking and going to split. Now we're going to have separate objects and we can rename it to base. I'm going to turn on the X-ray by going to the base and turning on X-ray. This way, we can see the inside of the model once we add the helix or conductor into it. For the caps, we're going to select both sides. Then we can inner extrude them by pressing I and set the offset to five. You can drag left to decrease or right to increase. I prefer to type it this way, it's a lot faster. We can extrude by pressing D, and since the offset is already 5, we can just make a new transform just like that. Now to make the conductor, we first need to bring a helix spline. So the settings that work for me is by setting the start and end radius to 10. Then by setting the start angle to 5000, we are going to get the swirls for the conductor. The height usually depends on how big the fuse is, so for now I put it to 105. I played around with the end radius and it was so swirly for me, so I went back to where I had it previously. By pressing the middle mouse button and pressing the middle mouse button on the top screen, we can see a better view of putting the conductor inside the fuse. Now that's already looking good so far. And so, we're going to bring a circle spline and set the radius to 0.4. That way the thickness of the helix won't be so wide. To finish this off, we're going to need a sweep and drag both the circle and the helix below it to make them a child and change the number to 10 to make it more smooth. Now let's bring a null and name it fuse and let's bring them all together so they can become one. To make the cap smooth and round, I added a subdivision surface to make them rounded corners. I changed the subdivision editor and renderer to 1 so it doesn't become that smooth to give me the edges I need for the model. Now it's time to fire up Octane. We'll add the lights later on. Let's bring a plane and use this as the floor. I'm going to change the width and height of the plane to 2000 and the segments to 1. Now I'm going to change my view angle and align the floor properly with the model. Then change the name to floor. We're going to use Octane Sky, click on the black box and select the HDRI you want to select. For this tutorial, I'm using my usual HDRI, but in the final render I use Patrick Foley's HDRI pack. You can use whatever HDRI works best. There's a lot of free sources like HDRI Haven and HDRI Skies. Now for the cloning part. 
This is also going to be a fast one. For the cloner, I used a honeycomb array, set the orientation to Y, made the count width 15, kept the offset 50%, and set the height to 10. Over at the bottom section, I set the size width to 100, and the size height to 250. That's all I did for the cloner section. Now I'm going to bring out my Octane camera and frame this composition accordingly. First thing I did was to set the camera to tele for a nice viewing angle. Then I zoomed back just to get all the other fuses in the scene and properly move the camera to the desired spot for the render. One thing that helps is by going to the camera, composition tab, and select any of the composition helpers to help you get the shot that you need. My usual go-to's is setting up the grid, the golden ratio, and the crosshair. Once you finish setting up your camera, by pressing the lock on the Octane Render Viewer, we can see all the bounding boxes and get a better idea of our render. Next, we're going to turn on post-processing and set the bloom power to around 12, and turning on enable camera image and playing around with the response till I get something that I like. One of the most important things to do is to save your project. You don't want to start all over again, especially when you're putting together a complex render. So for our final section, we are going to use the plane effector to animate these fuses to rotate. I turned on both position and rotation and set the frame count to 150. Since we're at zero at our timeline, we can keyframe the X position and the B rotation to zero. Then we're going to go to the middle of the timeline to 75 and set a keyframe of 180 in the X position and the B rotation. At the end of the timeline, we're going to make the X position and the B rotation back to zero and set to zero to animate backwards. Now if we press play, it will start moving, going forward and back. To get more control of your animation, you can right click, animation, and show F-curve. Automatically, it's set to a curve, which when it moves, it'll slow down when it gets towards the middle of the timeline. If we set the line to linear by selecting all points, it will be constant. To get the color variation from the conductors, we have to go to our plane effector, fall off tab, select random effector, color remap, and set the color mode to gradient. So if we see this at a top perspective, we can see all the variations. In the random field box, there's a point that you can drag from left or right. You can mess around with this to get different results. But what's cool, since we turn on the color mode to gradient, we can see what's being affected. To finish off this animation, our next step is to go to the remapping tab and set the strength to zero and the inner offset to 50% for variation. We will keyframe in frame one and then change the strength to 100 and set the keyframe on the last frame. The min is going to be a similar process to what we did and basically what we're gonna do is set it to zero, keyframe the first frame and set it to 100% and keyframe the last. So let's play this through and see what we got. Now if we right click on one of them just like we did before, we can go to the F curves real quick and we can set them both to linear. Now let's play it through and see how it looks now. Now to get a perfect loop, 
A good rule of thumb is to decrease the frame by one and make it to 149 frames. So that way, when the frame repeats in the beginning to the end, it becomes a perfect loop. Now I know it's kind of hard to tell because of how slow my computer is getting right now, but if you test it out on your machines, I'm pretty sure it's going to work out and you're going to get a perfect loop. Alright everyone, so we made it to the final part of the video, so this is where we're going to be talking about texture and how I put this together. So I'm going to give you guys a walkthrough on each individual texture and pretty much give you this result right here. So I opened up my project file from my uh, from the one that I made uh, on Instagram and so I'm just gonna go over through that one because that way it's a lot faster to just explain to you guys how I put things together. So let's begin, let's dive in. So I'm gonna be talking about how to make this, the RGB conductors uh, that's coming from the plane effector. So we're gonna be talking about that and how I put that together. And so, yeah, so let's begin with the caps. So the caps, basically what I did for this one is, uh, so I went to Grayscale Gorilla's library and picked up a warm nickel texture and I pretty much brought it in. Now, if I open it up, there's gonna be a lot of things going on. Now, you can basically like go on the internet, find some textures and uh, find a way to recreate this. But to get that nickel color, uh, they just pretty much use like a nickel worn diffuse. And then the rest is like a normal map. Uh, there's rounded edges and there's a roughness. So they're pretty much using a Quixel surface imperfection right there. And then they use the gradient to kind of make it shiny but at the same time, give it that, uh, you know, imperfection as well. So that's what this texture is all about, but I recreated it and, well, I didn't necessarily recreated it, but this is just my way of going about it and it's a lot simpler. So if you don't, if you want like a more silver approach, like then go for my route. If you want the more worn nickel route, then you just have to play around with some settings and find the right texture and color to to do that but let's say if I opened up this one it's a silver texture right so this is pretty simple like this is as simple as it can get when it comes to like uh, imperfection and metal so all I really did was uh, I just bring brought in a mixed texture uh, I brought two image textures one is a scratch surface and one is an, a fingerprint and then here is a gradient so i like i said i didn't want to do too much of the imperfection i still want a little bit of that uh shininess coming from that um you know texture if shininess is really a word so if you guys want like a particular color like if you want that that uh worn nickel uh what you can do is you can bring the rgb spectrum into this uh place it into the specular and if you want, if you go to like, I guess like somewhere around here, you can get something like that. Uh, maybe play around with like uh, the color, make sure you get, get it right. And this is probably as close as we can possibly get. I mean, it's a little darker. So this is what I mean by you have to like play around with it to get it to the right color. So if I just like place this in, the texture is going to be a little different, but not really. So not a lot has changed, but if I probably go closer, you could probably tell like the texture is a little different. So that's pretty much the caps. So for the RGB conductors, this one is really important. So pay close attention to what I'm going to be talking about here. So if you want to uh, basically texture this thing to get light from the plane effector what you need to do is bring in an instance color now right away it, the source is going to be on file and it's not going to work so it, it's just going to be a blue light there's nothing going on so if you press play it's just going to be that blue light so what you need to do to make this thing work is you need to set it to particle and then there's another 
uh, important step you have to do. You have to get the color source. So what is this plane effector affecting? The cloner, right? So we're going to bring that cloner and bring it into the color source. And now we should be able to get that RGB, uh, that RGB color through our animation. So that's good. And now just to kind of show you what I use for the gradient is I just used a full color gradient. So if we go down to this arrow and load the preset, there's a bunch of stuff that you guys can use. You can use heat, you can use full colors, or you can even put together your own gradient. Really up to you. And then to finish it off, I just, uh, I just uh, brought a black body emission and uh, you can play around with the power and the temperature. Uh, but if you want this to be brighter, all you really need to do is go to the post processing and just play around with the bloom power as well as the glare power as well to get like different results. So if that's what you guys want to do, go right ahead. So I just want to show you this. And so the third one is going to be the glass base. So I wanted to make sure that I get a nice glass, but like has a little bit of imperfection going on. So what I brought is uh, this Quixel imperfection. So that's pretty much what I did here. And then I set it to diffuse, uh, changed, it transformed it a little bit and moved around and changed the sizing as well. So I didn't want it to be too much. And then I also brought in a gradient just so, you know, it's not as Im imperfect, but there's still like, there's like a perfect balance basically. So this is why I love using the gradient. So that way you get uh, between the two. And then for the index, so I kept it at 1.5, but you can easily put it at 1.2. And if you want to see the glass a lot better or see the conductor uh, go through better, you can just like lower this. Uh, so you can definitely go for that route. Or if you want, you can increase it to two and make it like giant, but we don't want that. So I'm going to keep it at like 1.4. I think that's like a pretty good uh, spot or 1.5 is where I had it. So that's pretty much what I did for the glass. And just to top it off and finish off, the floor is pretty self-explanatory. I just use a glossy material went in there and basically I just made the diffuse black. Uh, then I brought in an image texture and played around with the textures uh, and I chose the fingerprints. Uh, again, you can choose whichever texture works well for your piece. I just chose the fingerprint texture because it's just good to use. And then for the gradient, I just did a light gray because I kind of want to showcase the imperfection a little more but you can easily like play around with the settings and get like a different result just by doing that so that's pretty much it so i hope you guys enjoyed the video please make sure to comment like and subscribe for more content and i'll see you guys in the next tutorial take care